Yeah, and that's a bit of a head scratcher. A set, John Isner to serve. Well, John Isner wanted to get fired up early in this match. That'll get him going, even though it's for Mo. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I don't, seen that leave? No, I, I don't want to get too much in the yeah, weeds about yeah. that, but it just seems like, well, since there is no real warning and there are no repercussions, yeah, deal. why institute yeah. it? Why even, you know, sort of address it? But Isner did get fired up about it, you're right. Bertie <laughs> Love. It's just getting warmed up at 121 miles per hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one serves and plays the, the score of the game better than John Isner. He, he brings out the heat and the big one when he needs it, and he'll serve a little bit more conservative for Isner standards. When he's up, say here, 40 love, and maybe take a little speed off of it, save energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, first game and a first meeting. So I've never heard of that before. I didn't know. I didn't know there was such thing as a warning. That's not a warning. I, I got you. Yeah, the former Georgia Bulldog taking the attack forward. The other thing, when you play someone like John Isner, it makes you that much more tentative sometimes, and you feel the pressure on your own serve because you know you're not going to get a lot of looks on the Isner serve. So when you are serving, you got to take care of your serve. First serve percentage is always important, but maybe against a guy like Isner even more so, because John's going to be aggressive on the returns, particularly when he's got a bit of time. Let's push up. He produces a fairly flat strike off that backhand wing. Yeah, and then he has spin on the forehand, Mo, so it's difficult to really get a rhythm against him. His backhand flat doesn't bounce very high, and then the forehand's got that loopy top spin on it. Yeah, yeah, 
Boy, nice adjustment. It looked like he was going to go forehand there, then quickly up to it. And a nice finish with the smash. So he's got a game on the board, so you can just allow those butterflies to yeah. settle a bit. I think that's also why maybe Mo decided to receive first. He did win the coin toss. Again, playing someone like Isner, you got to go about it two ways. One, you want to serve first and always play with the lead or maybe get a quick break early on because you don't think that Isner is really into the match yet or really zoned in on the serve just yet. Oh. Love 15. See the strapping on his right leg. This is something that wasn't there in his first round match. And there's the forehand. 15 -0. Yeah, we talk about Isner's serve and the effectiveness of first and second ball. The forehand, when it's going, one of the biggest shots in the game. I mean, it's a heavy ball. And it's really Isner's serve that's so masterful. It just sets up everything for the rest of his game. It's such a weapon. And he can create angles that no one is used to seeing, right? Just coming from that height, it just comes from a different trajectory. I mean, there's other players that serve maybe faster than Isner, but doesn't have that same bounce because it's coming from a different height. talking about returning Ivo Karlovic's serve and I guess he would say it's it's not the pace yeah I've seen exactly. big serves but the ball comes into such a high bounce yep so you're right that sort of trajectory the angle of the ball hitting the court and bouncing dramatically different from the other guys who tend to hit through the court there is there. untouchable Isner leads two games to one. Plus another seven. ace and another game for John Isner. Playing for a spot in the third round today. Yeah, Michael Moe, a chance today to take out a legend. He could become the answer to a trivial pursuit question, right? Who was the last man to, yeah. to beat John Isner? As Isner will retire at the end of this U.S. Open. Obviously one of the big stories here this year. You talk about that a little bit. It's also difficult for both players a little bit to really focus on the match at hand because if you're Michael Moe, you know that you could potentially retire John Isner. And if you're Isner, you're thinking, could this be my last match? It's, it's really difficult for both players. Fourteen 
And I could vividly remember being in Arthur Ashe Stadium watching Andre Agassi go down to Benjamin Becker. And then Benjamin Becker was, that's what he was known for for the rest of his career. He was the one. Took down Andre Agassi on Ashe Stadium. Left whistle. Game yeah, over. Two games all for set. Now you mentioned Benjamin Becker. When uh, Isner made his first inroads, Becker was involved in one of his first big tennis experiences. Download the U.S. Open app to follow your favorite players, track the latest scores, stats, match highlights, player news, and more. Available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. Download the U.S. Open app, usopen.org. You really have two options when you're returning the Isner serve. You either go 15 feet back behind the baseline, or you got to go two, three feet inside the baseline. Anywhere in between there, you almost have to hope and pray to even get a racket on it. Because you talk, we talked about it, Leaf, with the trajectory of the ball, and his placement is, you can put it on a dime. Oh. Especially the second serve. And Mo often going way back on this one. Fifty no. I would do that sometimes. Then it would go over my head. <laughs> I had to do the uh, the ladder. I had to go inside the baseline. Otherwise, that ball was going over my head. Yeah, I suppose it's either take it early or let it drop a little bit. Yeah. But you might run out of space back there by the time it drops. Well, yeah, the forehand's working well. Uh, Isra's first big run was in Washington, D.C. back in 07, and he beat Benjamin Becker in the first round. He also beat Tim Henman, Wayne Odesnik, Gail Monfils, and Tommy Haas. And the distinguishing feature about those wins, his first big wins, all of them tiebreakers in the third. Incredible. <laughs> I remember that run. Something that you do not see very often is they're missing an overhead. Especially one that was pretty routine there. Maybe the sun getting in the eyes a little bit this time of the day. He just maybe just misjudged it a little bit with the wind, but you see him look up at the sun. It's always the sun's fault when you miss the overhead. Got to look back up. Those tennis players, we're, we're all, you know, we've all got the defense mechanisms all in place, right? <laughs> For all the mistakes that are inevitable on a tennis court. Although maybe Novak Djokovic has a thing or two to say about that. He doesn't make too many mistakes these days, nor does Carlos Alcaraz. Although if he does make a mistake, it's equally as flamboyant as his winners. Okay, next up. There's not much you can do about that. Three games three to two great serving. Percent. Gets him out of the game after missing that short overhead. His team's courtside. And we're following this one. Be reaching the end of his career, although he's still planning on playing out the rest of the season, maybe into next year. Yeah, Steve Johnson's actually entered in a couple challenger events after this. He's already won a couple leading up to this US Open, which actually earned him the wild card. And here are two more wild cards playing each other here in the second round. Oh. 
Yeah, that's a nice way to get entry, isn't it? You don't have to get into the qualifying, but you put in the hard work in the USJ wildcard challenge. going to say that those long Isner. rallies definitely go in favor of Mo, but there's some vintage Isner. Again, he just can play so freely when you have that serve to back yourself up on and on these return games, take some chances early on, go for your shots, be aggressive. And look at that nine winners. And there's a winner for Mo. And you can see you're right. That forehand has a lot of shape to it. It's got that racket head speed. Zach Evenden in the white cap. Working with Michael Mo. Forty fifty. That's good serve there from Mo. Tough uh, as a returner to get timing on the Mo serve because the ball toss goes pretty high, a little higher than normal. So you got to time that split step right if you're Isner. Yeah, that was a sweet angle. That's a that. strong game. He's not making too many mistakes from the back, so he's going to be a tough out today. Yeah. You could tell the wind started picking up a little bit in that point. The net was moving on the bottom. Both players getting a little bit more safe with their targets. Good margin for both players there. Let's yeah, Michael Bow played in Winston-Salem last week and uh, lost in the third round of Borna Chorch in an absolute battle. The conditions were hot. Some great rallies between those two. He had a win over Marcus Garone in the second round there. And then Mo also got to the third round in Washington, D.C. and had a win over Hubie Herkosh, who at that time was 17 in the world rank. So he's had some good wins coming in. He's won some matches in tough conditions. So he's got a bit of uh, momentum, I'd say, coming in here. I probably should mention, going back to Wimbledon, that Mo also had a win over the Canadian Felix Auger-Aliassime 
at that time 12 in the ranks. But maybe a little undercooked in terms of match play. I know Felix had been struggling, but still a good win. He came through the qualies. 30 in, in Delray, he actually beat Chapovalov as well. So he had a win over Chapo and Oji Eliasim. Beat Chapovalov in the round of 16. Then he beat Kovacevic. Yeah, he's a strong player there, too. Yeah. He's playing well. Oh, yes. He's finding that inside out backhand beautifully. 40 15. He didn't look completely comfortable running no. forward, did he? Maybe a little bit of soreness, a little bit of a hangover from the previous match. Yeah, he got up to that ball a little gingerly. <laughs> Wasn't so sure if he wanted to push it. Still has a game point for 4-3. When you hit a ball that flat, that deep, it can be so effective. Yeah. That was a good strike there. I almost feel like that was an, a forced error, but... Yes, I, yeah, and Mo's doing a good job now of putting the return to serves in play. When you play against Isner, you know that the bigger serves come in when the deeper knee bend comes. If he's not bending his knees in full motion, he's, gonna, he's taking a little bit off of it. I mean, something is a little off, but let's see here. That dropped, and he still hit that one 123, that's but Mo. that's not the full Isner. Let's see if uh, now down break point, if he really goes into it and gets really aggressive with this serve to get himself out of trouble here. Great shot there from Mo. That's the forehand we talked about. Leaf has so much action. Got a lot of whip, a lot of hand speed at the end. But Isner cleaned it up. Juice. That's a great point there if you're Michael Moe. You made him play every single ball. He could he actually fell down, got back up? <laughs> that, that was far back in the court there. Michael Moe almost got tripped over by one of the microphones. Advantage mode. The first double fault. He's got the five aces. First serve to the rescue. 
seen that before. <laughs> You've seen those go by you, yes. you mean? <laughs> yeah. Although your claim to fame is beating him at Newport, right? Yeah. You got him, you got him at Rhode Island. Isn't a moment we talking about that match. <laughs> It was before they resurfaced the court. So the ball done. wasn't bouncing so high. So me being about five foot nine and the ball <laughs> sitting right in my strike zone perfectly for me. When we shook hands at the end of that match. He said, I'm never playing here again. But that was a lie because <laughs> he came back and won it again. He won it the next year and then won it four times. Okay, and it's done. Yeah, one of his uh, personal kingdoms. 16 career titles. Three gets the game. Gets to 4 3. <laughs> Let's Let's go. Go. You see these new tennis balls will move through the court pretty quickly. They'll hit this lake hold surface and really skid. Of course, Isner's serve could leave a mark <laughs> on the back fence. Play, yeah. just cut it too they thin. Feel. I don't think Mo had to even make it that good. Isner almost was given up on that point. Just had to, could have given yourself a little bit more space over the net, but Mo just trying to make this drop shot just a little too good. Obviously, as the set goes on and gets closer to the finish, and you feel that much pressure on your own serve because you know you're not going to get that many looks. And if you're Mo, you had a couple in that last game, and you wonder to yourself, am I going to get another opportunity like that? Speed forward. 30 old. Isner down the middle of the court, taking away that angle from Mo. And yeah, Mo would definitely prefer to have a little bit more space on that forehand, a little bit more to the right so that he can really whip that cross court. You go down the middle hard like that, makes your opponent think twice.
Juice. Well, a fairly neutral ball. Yeah. Sailed on him. Can sense Mo is actually getting a little tentative there at the forehand, not putting as much pace on it, just trying to make Isner play that extra ball. He got away with it there. Advantage Mo. A good return again from Isner, but Mo definitely again more comfortable when he can handle pace on that backhand side. He just blocks it back, Leafy hits it so flat, and just kind of redirects it. Juice. Advantage, now you can see how stoked he was to get that first serve in. A good one, 121 down the tee. Nice to get an add with your serve. Obviously looking to close it down. John's warming up a little bit. Yeah, he's got some wingspan there at the net because that was a great passing shot from Mo, but tough to get that by someone like Isner. Almost better to go right at Isner low on the first one so that you can pass on the second one. Try and go for a winner like that. Isner can cover almost the whole court a couple steps. to the body, handcuffing Isner. Not able to even get a full swing on that at all. <laughs> Isner back in down the line return. So solid. I'll tell you, the backhand on Isner definitely doesn't have the same firepower, but a little bit more consistent at times. The forehand's the one that he gets really aggressive. You'll see a lot more winners, but more errors on that side at times. Backhand's kind of like the, the jab before the uppercut comes. <laughs> Is there? Now he took on the risk by playing into that small space, Mr. Wide. Get behind him, John Isner. 
is the lead. Five Fist games to the three team there. Set. And that's exactly what Isner does to you. you. You hold serve pretty routinely throughout this first set so far, and then you get into a little bit of a tough game here, and you just feel all that more pressure on yourself to hold serve. And Mo coming in off a, I would say, below average approach shot there, and Isner doing a good job of making him pay. Yeah, Mom Karen, Father Robert are in, in the group. 15 long. Serving for the set. Yeah, and then you see Isner with that slight little boost of energy now that he gets that break. We talk about how he plays the score so well and obviously serving for the first set here, he knows that he can bring up that energy level again. Does it better than anybody, John Isner. That camera angle, yeah. good indication of how fast that ball is coming. Yeah, when you know, that camera angle is low like that, you really get a sense of the speed and the trajectory of the Isner serve. Tough reaction time if you're Mo. Gets the break, takes care of business on his serve. His team's on their feet as he sits down 6 3. Back in the 1980s, his father out of Nigeria. Well, that forehand barely catching the line. Isner didn't even think that that was going to land in. He kind of stopped playing a little early. Yeah, 123 right down the tee. Nice way for him to reset here in this opening game of the second. Michael's dad, Tony, he also played college tennis at St. Augustine College in Florida. That's a D2 school. Okay, Mo. <laughs> well, that one fell back. Side. So good start for Mo then in the second. So, a couple of nervous moments, I think, helped him ultimately get broken. Of course, Isner out of Greensboro, North Carolina. That's pretty international. I think they have an international airport there. Isner now out of the big D, and they've got a wonderful 
new ATP event there, the Dallas Open. There's Isner into the finals there. Boy, he had four championship points in that event. Uh, Isner really uh, stays true to his roots. Big sports fan. Obviously loves his Georgia Bulldogs. He's a big hockey fan as well. Loves the Carolina Hurricanes. Even though he lives in Dallas. Yeah, I was wondering whether he'd have yeah. to shift a lead. Don't tell me oh, he's he a will. Cowboys fan. No. Yeah, he's, he's got to be with the Panthers. It's big time. Full team up. It's one of those Roger Federer games here. 55 seconds. Is there like as a college player when you talk to some of the guys coming up? He, yeah, so was, he was a bit rough, I hear, that he was it, really had to evolve as a player, didn't he? It's amazing. I mean, you got to give full credit to John Isner and all of his team for the way that they've improved his game overall, all around. Exactly. He was always there. And, and I only say that because Isner said, I needed four years of oh, college. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He grew. He always talks about it, how he grew as a, a person, not physically, but as a person, but both on and off the court. But I remember, can vividly remember playing him in Gainesville and in Athens, Georgia, and you know, obviously the serve was always been the weapon, but if you could get into long extended rallies, you know, he would either check out of the point or just go for broke at times. And, you know, over his career, he's really evolved into a much more solid player off both sides. Oh. And especially his neck game has gotten so much better. And physically, now he's able to withstand and play these long matches. That was something in college where he wouldn't last in those full three set matches at times, especially if it was hot in Florida. Thirty fifteen. Thirty. This is what he does to you. It's. It's so difficult if you're Mo because you're not getting the rhythm that you're used to getting against, I would say, 85, 90% of the players on tour. Second serve. Ball there. Two, three, three. Now that's going to test a few of the fans' reactions as that one came screaming into the stance. All right, there's a point for 2 1. To deuce. Oh. 
Vance Chisna. That is returning well. I always said early on in Isner's professional career, I said, why wouldn't you just go for returns like that all the time? You know you're going to hold serve 99.9% .9 of the time, and you have so much confidence in that as a weapon. Why not go for broke on the return of serves when you have it? Yeah, let's see what he does here. Break point. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Really good serve there. Curled that down the center line. Advantage is there. He just zones in when it comes to crunch time, isn't there? He knows. I feel like at the beginning of some games, he kind of feels it out a little bit, you know, for the 15 all points, 15 30. Then all of a sudden, now he gets to deuce, and it's, it's a different level. And he ups his energy level, ups the intensity, and focus as well. John Isner, he's currently ranked 157, but he's not worried about the ranking. <laughs> he's he's uh, announced his retirement at the end of this event, but up a set and a break. So Love maybe he can day. avoid, you know, sitting in the rocking chair. Tries to build on this advantage. He's looked good. Knew he had no chance if Isner went to the open court, so he kind of faked and then stayed home on that side. Watch this as Mo fakes like he's going to recover and stays home and somehow comes up with an unbelievable backhand pass there. Gotta say, Leaf, it's nice to have something like that as a weapon, but just the way he hits that serve, it wasn't like it had so much pace behind it. I mean, even though, yeah, okay, it was 115, but it starts off in the ad box, and by the time it's done, it's on the other side of the U.S. Open sign back there because it has <laughs> so much movement on it.
Same result, same shot from Mo. Juice. I understand the urge to do it because Mo is so deep yeah. in the court, but boy, does he move well. And Isner didn't really disguise that drop shot so well. You saw the racket face was open. Mo was able to get a good jump start on that, but still had to come up with the goods there. Great passing shot there as he's on the full out slide with the slice back in. Isner. And Mo doing a great job on that return, too. He kept that pretty low, but you just got to tip your hat. And you see his doubles partner, Jack Sox, in there now. The full crew. Boy, what a shot again. I think we saw this story before. Advantage is there. On that do side, that's where Moe's got to change up the stance on the return because he hasn't really gotten a good good look on that side. Take it early or go even farther back because Isner is just picking on that slice wide right now. Yeah, that's a good game. Game is there. Mo played some some fine points. Is it is three is it to one second, second. Underlines the break here in the second. A nice combination of plays. Is also on the team that's Grant Chen. From Dallas. You're on. USOpen.org is your online home for point-by-point -point live scoring, highlights, real-time stats and draws. Visit the official tournament site at USOpen.org. 15 minutes. Forty nine. That's a strong game, but is the lead three games to two. The damage Same has game. been done, so and by one set to Mo will at least stay within reach. He's at two three, but it's Isner set and a break.
in the ranks. And for 10 years, he was top 20. One year finished in the top 10 at number 10 in 2018. Love 50. And you talk about the pressure of trying to get to the Isner serve. Every time you get the ball in play, yeah, you, you feel like this. I've got to win this point. Yeah, it's a great feeling. <laughs> you get the return to serve and play. You're like, okay, I'm in the rally, and then all of a sudden Isner will go for a big forehand. You're like, I'm out of the rally, <laughs> and then you got to deal with the serve again. So it's so challenging. It's not so much a physical battle. It's more of a mental battle when you play against Isner. Love and you feel like you're in an unbelievable position here if you're Mo to maybe get a chance at breaking back and this is when Isner will take his time and then come and knock out two big serves to get it right back but again Mo doing a good job here in this game didn't have to do anything on that point so he'll take that And there's one. 15, 30. And usually on the ad side, when he really needs one, he'll pop that flat one out wide. But he may stay away because the Mo backhand return is probably the more solid of the two. So Isner will see if he decides to go to his favorite or if he's going to go to the weakness of the opponent. Oh, he goes with oh, yeah. the I would have been sitting on that one all day, Lee. <laughs> Still would have gotten by me, but yeah, that's that's his go-to when he needs one on the ad side. And as you said earlier, he, yeah. he saves that little extra gas for when he needs it most. Yeah. And this is the stuff that just beats you down as a player. When you're Mo, you feel like you you got a good position in the game and just takes your racket out of your hands. Still an opportunity in this game. Oh. Yeah, watch out for the big kick now from Isner on the second. Juice. I feel like Isner's trying a, a lot of drop shots today, even on the volleys too, just trying to finish the point. I feel like he's in pretty good position to hit that forehand volley through the court or angle it off. Didn't have to be so short in the court, especially if he gets it to the Mo forehand, he'll get a little look because he'll have to whip it up and down. Those are the looks that you're not going to get a lot of if you're Michael Moe. And you've got to take advantage of that. Would have probably tried to hit that shorter in the court, cross court, not so deep, and get Isner on the run. What about you, Leaf? Yeah, I, I like when he's opening up the court. Now, Isner can't hurt you as much right. when he's out wide. If Isner's dominating the center of the court, that could be tough. Try and get him out of that that location. First of all. And I always felt that Isner was so much more dangerous when he was hitting forehands on the ad side. When he's running around hitting forehands, you were always on your heels because that's when he was really going to hurt you.
Game is the lead. Boy, an absolute rocket of a serve. Is the lead. Four games to two. I barely saw that serve, but yes. I, th I think it was an ace. <laughs> he's only 129 out wide. Jeez. He's already got 15 aces, so he's doing some good things with the serve as usual. There's the MPH. 38 years of age. With 15 love. And at 38, he's the oldest American man to win a singles match since Jimmy Connors. It's back in 92. Jimmy won a match on his 40th birthday. Oh, boy. Oh, and he missed it. 30 love. Yeah, sometimes you see... Your opponent go down like that, and you're too focused on that, and you don't pay attention to the shot. Isner just literally could have just bunted the ball back in the court, but just glad Mo's okay there. Full two left. New balls, please. All right, so that's 4-3 for three Isner seconds. here in the second. Five walks to love. And he's got new tennis balls after the first seven, and then the next nine games. 15 left. And is you're playing doubles here with Jack Sock last year. We got the Sunshine double in the doubles. He went Indian Wells in Miami. Went Indian Wells with Hurt Gosh. Miami with Jack Sock. The funny pairing, though, was Rome when he got to the finals with Diego Schwartz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's a funny picture of uh, David and Goliath pairing yeah. together. <laughs> oh! Is there 6 10? Schwartzman 5 7. I did feel like that when I was Four shaking his out. hand at the net. <laughs> I mean, there's a funny video of Duty Sella when he played Ivo Karlovic one time. And after the match, he went back and pulled the chair from where the umpire was sitting and then put it on the, right by the net and stood on it to shake Ivo Karlovic's <laughs> yeah. hand. That's a great thing about tennis, isn't it? It could be 5'7", it could be 6'10". Still finding success and satisfaction in our sport. Michael Moe, six feet, two inches. Good height for tennis. It's funny how the guys have gotten taller in terms of average. You know, Rod Laver, Ken Rosewell, they were 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, six foot, maybe 6'1". You're right. I feel like tennis players have, Murray. on average, gotten taller. Yeah, Murray and Djokovic are, what, 6'2", yeah. 6'3"? Six, six, oh. the, the prototypical player. Yeah. But now you're getting these Medvedevs and guys 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, who move so beautifully. Like NBA players, the way they move. I mean, you see it up close and personal, you realize how big and tall they actually are. The way they run up and down the court. I mean, tennis... Got to be a little bit more agile, but like guys six foot four moving like the top guys is it's incredible. Oh wow! Game is the 
There it is, Leaf, isn't it? There's he's got to play doubles today, too. Three, second set. <laughs> Having a little chat with his team. Well, it's nice when uh, things are going as they are if you're in the Isner team, right? Setting a break. All is good in the camp. Love 15. Well, the set continues. I mean, Michael Moe's had one comeback from two sets down. Set not over yet. Fifteen all. Yeah, this is when Isner really frees up, up a set and a break, and just feels that he can be really aggressive and take some chances here. He'd love another one so that he could start off the third set serving. Game mode. Here's the lead. Five games to four. Second seven by one. Since Moe's been broken, he's done pretty solidly on serve. But you can see the predicament he's in as Isner's going to come around to serve for the second set at 5 4. Yep. And notice on this side. Kind of tossing the ball up before he served just to adjust to see where the sun would be interfering with his toss. And this is when Isner does a little bit of a quick toss. Doesn't toss it as high as normal so that the ball doesn't get so high up that the sun is in his view. But makes it even more challenging now because he could almost quick serve you sometimes. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting observation. It doesn't seem to be going as high. No. And then it throws off Mo. Thirty-nine to turn to serve because he's so used to the split stepping at a certain time. Now all of a sudden, Isner almost speeding up the motion to take you out of even more rhythm, as if it was hard enough, not hard yeah. enough to return the serve before. Yeah, that's a little bit might like a Nick Kyrgios serve yeah. or a yeah. Goran Ivanišević. These guys who take the ball early in the toss. Are you surprised more players don't serve like that? Or is it more tri timing difficult? Oh, that's a nice forehand. I think it's just too difficult to, to change something like that up. Isner's done that Full since he was in college. And it's something that he's always done. So he's confident doing that, especially 
in the big moments, he'll do it. Uh, if the sun's in his eyes, change up the motion, speed it up a little bit. Some impeccable defense there, and he's got set points. Game in second set is that. And Six it does games get to the four. second set. Is the leads two sets to love. Playing some really good tennis, so this is the Pete Sampras formula: break and a break. It's two sets <laughs> to love. Not too many guys sit on changeovers with the leg crossed over. Yeah. It's been a lesson in what John Isner does well out here on the grandstand. There's uh, our man in the chair, umpire Haig. I'm Leif Shiras alongside Jesse Levine, former Canadian Davis Cupper. Nice day to talk about long. American tennis with these two kicking off the schedule on grandstand. We won't talk too much about Canadian tennis with the fortunes of the Canadians here this year, but kind of a tough outing for the Yeah, I mean, the obviously, Shepard not of the healthy, border. so had to pull out, couldn't play. Same with Andrescu, dealing with a stress fracture in her back. Fifteen old. Felix Auger-Aliassime yeah. lost early. I mean, Called that match, he played Mackie McDonald. Former semifinalist yeah. here, right? And Shapo was also a semifinalist, wasn't he? Or quarterfinals. Quarters. Yeah. Obviously, Andrescu, a former champion here. Thirteen fifteen. And Layla Fernandez also lost early. She's a former finalist here. So the Canadians have done well in the past, but Maybe not so much this year. Forty fifty. And you can see the modes. Mentioned the strong summer he's had, winning a lot of matches on the hard courts this year. You can see the rhythm he can produce. He's a very skilled player from the back. Oh. It's not easy to play your game when you're feeling that kind of pressure that you must hold, and that you must not make mistakes. Game over. Yeah, game, a good strong third game for Mo, who got to the third round in Australia at the uh, season's first major. Trying to do that again here today. Of course, he did lose to an American in the third round there. That was J.J. Wolf. And it was J.J. Wolf who ended up losing to Ben Shelton. And Ben. Grant Chen on his feet and McPherson both standing up after that point. Those are the balls that are obviously tough for John Isner, the low short ones, because he's got to get up to him, try and catch the ball at its highest point as he possibly can. See if Mo does anything to change that up. Maybe bait Isner to come in forward with a short slice, make him hit that approach shot. Thirteen 
30 15. I don't want any of our SMU Mustang fans to think that Grand, Ch Grand Chen is pulling for a bulldog here. I think it's more of the Dallas well, connection, it's right? It's not the same conference. <laughs> he can do it. <laughs> well, Isner obviously living there now. He spends a lot of time at the SMU courts practicing. So Grand Chen definitely arranges for some good practice sessions there. I'm sure he practices with a lot of the players. It's a good recruiting tool there for Grand Chen. Hey, come to SMU, you get to practice with John Isner. That's pretty nice to be able to yeah. put your game up against Isner's. They do have an incredible new indoor facility. It's it's beautiful. Game is it? One game all puts out. Yeah, the Texas tennis community is vast, and certainly in Dallas, plenty of support. They've got a new event there this year, the Dallas Open, I should say, over the last couple of years now. Isner a part of that push to be inclusive? Of course, with four kids, he's not going to be getting out to the courts much these days after his retirement. <laughs> 15 yeah. So far. And Leaf, you know, Isner obviously really hit the, the map when he had that 70-68 win at, at Wimbledon. But he's kind of a homebody. He likes playing in the United States. He's had pretty much all of his, almost all of his tournament titles have been in the United States. Well, so you can yeah, the 16 career titles only two of them have come outside our border and both at the same side. That was in Auckland, New Zealand. He won his first title there back in 2010. Oh. And again in 2014. But yeah, I think he likes home cooking. <laughs> yeah. It must be tough to travel with six foot ten. Now, knowing some of the sort of sleeping accommodations in Europe and the sort of smaller beds, I want to say, <laughs> it can't be easy to sleep comfortably at 610. 40, 30. Still playing well, it's two games to with one. the First kind set. of energy that, okay, I'm gonna, I can do this. He certainly has come from behind. Love two once before. That'll be tested today. So 2-1 for Mo in the third. Maybe he can relax a little bit now, being down a couple sets 
He certainly has the fitness to go five. Oh, almost right in the camera there. That serve from you know. John Isner. Uh, Mo's doing all the right things now. You got to show Isner that you're not going away. Show a couple of fist bumps, even though you may not feel the best being down two sets to love. You got to show your opponent that you're not going to go anywhere. And we mentioned Bo having a, a good, strong season. He kicked it off in Australia, mentioned with that third round performance, but he had a win over Sasha Zverev. And I know Sasha was a little bit undercooked in terms of his tennis, but to beat a guy in the top 15 in the world, it's a nice way to kick yeah. off the season. You give you a little boost oh. of confidence, get a little momentum going early in the year. I can really set the table for what's to come. I thought we were going to see another Isner drop shot oh, you know. towards the Mo backhand side and another sliding passing shot there, but good volley there from, from Isner. Soft hands from the big man. Backhand's been money today. Two games all, third set. Good, Wife Madison, supportive as usual. Of course, the crowd would have been bigger if they had the kids here. I don't see the kids. There are four of them. Hunter Grace, John Hobbs, James McKinley, and Chapel Lee. Someone's doing some good work with the names. Stay connected to the U.S. Open on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Join the conversation with hashtag US Open. Fifteen love. against most players would have either gotten an easy short ball or maybe even an ace but because Isner's got such long reach he's able to get that ball deep in the court and neutralize things and, and Mo's doing what 50. a lot of players do now they keeps that ball low right down the center and then has faith in his feet to come and make something happen on the next ball was that a tactic you like to use or did you like to go wide early kind of dependent on where my positioning was when I was trying to get a passing shot if I felt like I had a good look on it, then I would definitely go wide. If if not, then I'd try and go down the middle, like you said, and then try and rely on my speed and footwork. But again, Mo moves so well that he can rely on that to most likely get to the next shot. Oh. Yeah, I think there was a time in the game when guys were expert volleyers, <laughs> maybe going yeah. back a number of years. But now I think you can make guys make difficult volleys and it can test them up there. Yeah, Mo. yeah, Mo's doing well here. He's got his nose ahead. We're on serve. It's 3-2. For Isner. His last title. Oh, nice 
nicely done, but his last title was in Atlanta. 15 in, love, uh, in love 2021. In you know, he won that title a yeah. number of times. Close to home, close to college. He won six Atlanta titles. Yeah. Personal ATM machine. <laughs> Small withdrawals. You know, conditions in Atlanta are pretty hot as well, so he manages his energy pretty well yeah. in hot conditions. Obviously, he gets the free points here and there with the serve. That helps. Yeah, that was an excellent return. Lots of pace behind it. <laughs> when Izzer starts hitting his spots, like that and with that much pace, you almost have to guess on a first serve here, Michael Mo, because you want to be able to put something on the return. But again, you're not going to be able to react that fast to a serve coming from that trajectory with that speed. Like there, he was leaning a little bit towards the forehand and he's able to put that deep. That's a great return there for Mo. Even though he didn't hit over it, he still chipped it deep. Interesting. Have a look where his eyes are looking before the toss. Well, Coach Zach was not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard him Is say. New ball's playing but three games all third set. Well, some servers have a tell. Don't think Isner really has a tell. I mean, I've been on the other side of that serve more than I wanted to. I, I don't see a tell. It's more about tendencies. That is more of a read, I would say. I did play one player that would whisper to himself where he was going so I could see what he was saying. I'm not going to name names. Wow, that's... Yeah. That's a tell. Yeah, that was a tell. Didn't Andre Agassi talk about Boris yeah, Becker? Yeah, he did. He did. That, Where the tongue was going? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's there. Becker and Agassi, a couple of U.S. Open champions. Got their name on that. Sort of revered list of players who've raised the championship trophy here. Who's going to get seven wins here in New York? Yeah, that's a pretty good looking low. shot. I mean, it, it's very flat. But <laughs> when, he's, when he's confident, he hits and, it. And watch the backswing on this back end for Mo. There's barely anything. It's just so compact. So not a lot can go wrong. And that means he's timing the ball so well if he's able to put that much pop behind it oh. with such little backswing.
Yeah, yeah, Mo. Mo leads. Mo, right, Mo continues to play well here in the third. He's taking care of his serve. If he can do that, at least he can get here into the later stages of this third. Keep his chances alive. Fifteen. And the one thing that's so admirable about the serve, it, you know, people say, well, he's tall, he has a good serve. Well, it's more than that. He does everything so well. You know, this kinetic chain that is the serve, all the parts seem to sync so well. Oh. Yeah, Isner was the original, put the ball through the legs before you serve, like the basketball move. Oh. See a couple other oh, players following his footsteps there. Lauren Davis actually does it on yes. the WTA Tour. I see J.J. Wolf does it as well. Now, I, I'm going to contest that. Okay. I, I'm going to say, I think Boris Becker did, oh, did a little he? bit. Yeah, I okay. think he did a little bit of that. I don't okay. know if he did his entire career like John. Okay, okay. Certainly the f first American. Although you're right, oh. Lauren Davis does do that. Yeah. Isner wasn't sure if he should let that one go or not. 14, 15. A couple good volleys there from Isner. Getting ready for his doubles match later. <laughs> yeah, a little body English by Isner. Now we're sort of heading in that direction to a tie break. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but something that Isner knows so well. Such a gamer. Those crucial moments, so clutch at times. So he's had an impact on the game, right down to the scoring when you think of the Isner rules when it came to tie breaks. Obviously, the 70-68 was a key one, but the 26-24 against Kevin Anderson, you know, Wimbledon changed the rules about tie breaks for the very next season. Yeah, I mean, I got to tell you something, if I was at Wimbledon that Thank year you. that he won 70-68, you should have seen his feet in the locker room after that. I mean, it almost looked like he wasn't going to be able to walk. He might have even stepped foot on the court after that. Yeah, over 11 hours of tennis, over three days. Forty, fifteen. Yeah, the match with Anderson ended 26-24. It was in 2018, and then 2019, the new rule, they'd play a tiebreaker at 12 games all. That was a 12-point tiebreaker. And they ended up using it, right? Djokovic yeah. beat Federer in the championship match using the new rules. The Isner rules. Yeah. I, I thought it was pretty exciting. I mean, I, I'm all for it. Of course, they changed yeah. the rules again. 
Now it's just the match tie break in the fifth set. Do you like yeah, that yeah, change? Yeah, yeah I, I, I do. Well, it's five games I think it four. makes it really That's exciting right. to finish off a match it's as well. Two like sets that. to love. There's no need for a match to go to 70 60. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good there. Oh, the first one into the body, gets that short ball. And moves up to that so well. Catches that ball just high enough so where he's able to really get that wrist below the ball and spin it, get it to drop in. Pretty quick. Lesnar said after his first round victory that he was feeling pretty good. That he would need the kind of support from the crowd to help him get through tough moments. Certainly getting that from his team again today. The section of the draw he's in, the winner will take on the winner of Jack Draper and Hubert Herkosh. And both those guys, certainly talented, but it's doable. Isner's got to get through this one first. Exactly. But again, yeah, with his serve, I mean, he could beat anybody. It's just a matter of how how healthy is he feeling and how how the body holds up after. Oh, right into the microphone. <laughs> he chair <laughs> right there. Is are just shaking his head. You know, in, in, in Isler's mind, I'm thinking, okay, he'd probably like to get out of here in three straight sets. Michael Moe's thinking, I can still do this. Yeah. You know, so this is no done deal. We saw Tommy Paul do it last night, down two sets of love. Unbelievable effort. Yep. That's a 15. Yeah, Paul taking out Roman Safulin, the, the Russian. And the first two sets, I don't think I've ever seen Safulin play better. I mean, the first two sets, Safulin was playing like he was a top 10 player. It was incredible. And then he had that almost self-doubt as if I could keep that level up. And Tommy Paul just jumped on that opportunity and there was no looking back. Oh. Yeah, one of those early breaks of serve in the third that Tommy sort of, okay, I can do this from love two down. Got him back in it. on that return of serve with that reach able to get that so deep in the court to start to really neutralize and he's starting to pick on the mo forehand a little bit in these tight moments here that's the side that mo has gotten tentative on but see if isner can 
keep picking on that side a little bit. That's good serve there from Mo. Full save, full save. A couple of pressure moments, but he survives. So his coach and his team are happy to see 6-5. Yeah, again, Mo doing the right thing there. He's leaning on the slice wide. That's where Isner started off. I would say 75% of the games with the first serve going slice wide, the first point of the game on a serve. Isner starting to change it up. This is the side that the Sun has given him a little bit of problem. So this is when he does the quick serve. Toss goes a little low. You see him looking up. A little different of a feeling when you're that high up and tossing it. It's a little closer to the Sun than you and I, Leaf. <laughs> Well, that toss gets up in the jet stream. Yeah. And it seems like the breezes haven't had too much of an impact today, which is nice. Of course, that light breeze does tend to keep you cool. Oh. Temperatures in the mid-70s today, so it's a little more mild than yesterday. Boy, it was high 80s yesterday. And very humid as well. Full Tilo. There's that slice wide from Isner. It's amazing because that was only 104 miles an hour. That's like a slow ball from Isner. Just when you hit your spots, I take 104 slice wide like that, then 125 right into the slot for Mo. Okay, Isner. I got to tell you, this is a uh oh moment. Six games now because so this is what Jordan Isner just loves to get into these tie breaks. I think he's played enough of them. Yeah, his tie break record, just in terms of his career, 505 and 332. It's a lot of tie breakers. See their records this season. Moe's done well, six and five. One zero Mo. Volley down low with some nice underspin. 
So Mo has uh, got the mini break. We'll see if he can protect his serve. This is where your Mo first serve percentage gets even more important in this tiebreaker here. You don't want to give Isner a look at a second serve that he can really jump on and be aggressive and take chances. Thread the needle down the line. Serve there Ball for one Mo. Mo. Gives him a little bit of breathing room now in this tie break. Now if you're Mo, you got to guess on the first serve. Because you want to make sure that you can, if you can take that chance now, be aggressive on the return of serve, having that mini break. So Mo doing a great job of making him play a difficult overhead there. Right, come on. Full three Mo. And even though you got that mini break now, if you're Mo, you feel that pressure that you gotta take care of your serve here, because if not. Don't know if you could get another mini break in here. It's a, so tough. Such a mental battle, too. Five, three, Mo. Yeah, down the T. battling and doing a strong job on serve. Really good, lots of first serves. That always helps. Set. So this one, gentlemen, they'll play on. All right, so it's a fourth set then between these two, John Isner and Michael Moe. Second round match here on the grandstand is Michael Moe bouncing back nicely. 15 eight. And delivering a very solid tie break. Did not have a break of serve. We did not have a break point. 
in the third set. So both guys taking care of their serve. And the automatic line system also does call the foot fault. Uh, That's the perfect start for Isner, serving first in the fourth set, something that Mo was doing in the third. Mo served first there. Is that an advantage to serve first, do you feel? John Isner and the weapon that he has, you definitely want to be up in the score so that you could take some even more chances now on the return to serve games. Yeah, you're never as comfortable Fishing taking level. chances when if you lose your serve, you yeah. can lose the set, right? Exactly. Thirty fifteen. Trying to stay loose, Michael Mo. Twenty five years of age. Yeah, nicely yeah. done. Really good there from Mo. And that's when we talk about he can roll it, kind of shorten the court more off to the side. That's what's going to give Isner more trouble if you're Michael Moe, not through the middle. Less pace, more angle. Game yeah. up. New yeah. ball, please. Yeah. All right, so Moe's on the board. And we've been talking about sort of the evolution of the game with Isner and, and how the rules have changed because of him. He's like the Wilt Chamberlain, right, of <laughs> tennis, how the rules have changed because of him. You might remember Wilt Chamberlain you know, standing in the lane. That's how the three-second rule evolved in the National Basketball Association. But we've also seen how the game has changed in terms of tactics and shape and the rackets and the string of yeah, shape. Yeah, I was going to say technology as well. Yeah, I mean, because... You see someone like Michael Moe with that shape on the forehand. Suddenly these guys are playing so wide. The game, you have to be such an athlete to protect your side of the court because of the shots these players produce. Yeah, the game's become so physical. And obviously the string and the rackets, I think, definitely play a huge factor with the technology. And the, the amount that the players are able to swing so freely and be confident that the ball is going to drop in yeah. is absolutely incredible. So it's just... It's made such a huge difference. Talk about an Isner rule and a Will Chamberlain rule. That's some high praise of tough big company there. Yeah, exactly. You know, 
Uh, one more thought about the wide attack. I mean, there was a time when, you know, guys like Bjorn Borg were suddenly playing with Thompson, but it wasn't necessarily out wide so much. It was through the court, yeah. but high. Now it's high and wide. Like that right there. Yeah. Remember we talked about it. You don't want to get too you know. technical, but the revolutions on the ball that the players now are able to put, especially on that forehand side, is, is just astronomical. I mean, I know Jack Sock's forehand, he can really, and Rafa, obviously, when that ball hits your racket, it, you see it coming at you like an egg shape, almost like a kick serve. They can do that on the forehand side. I think Casper Ruud might be at the top of the list these days for revolutions produced on his forehand. So G15. Good return there. Yeah, we were looking at Isner's racket, you know, still still playing with the Prince and yeah. the red string. I think he's he, been using that his whole career. He's used that same string since college. He has not switched at all. I, obviously, he's faithful and it's done him well. Why change? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there's another thing that'll dissuade players attacking the net is the spin you can create cross court and down low. It's hard to protect that yep. space of the court with the spin players can produce. That's why you gotta be very selective about when you do come in. It's also why oh. you don't see as many servant volley anymore just because of the way players can return. Oh boy. 13, 14. Yeah, Mo's got to really just cover the wide serve here. As Isner loves going on the ad side on the big points. And Mo can't believe it because he Juice. hit a great return. <laughs> it shows me two things that Isner's coming in like that. One, he doesn't want to play a long point. Or two, he's really trying to change things up here on that second serve. Got yeah, Mo's almost in disbelief after that. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty happy with that return. Advantage, Murray. Well, he did well to get another yeah. ball back into play, protecting that wide space. Seeing, yeah, he's taking a moment just to towel off, but also. Also trying to get the game plan right in his mind. What's, what's the strategy here? Let us go. Again, and Isner's furious that he's lost his no, serve. Two games to walk. 
both sides. The first time the leads, that Mo has been able to get a breakthrough. So he's got the edge now. Here's Mo with the lead. Isner trying to make something happen. Well, he hasn't come forward too much today. Fairly effective when he has gotten up there. Six of eight. Just seasoning his attack with the occasional volley. You talk about coming forward. Yeah, Mo only coming in eight times. Isner 38 times. Things can get a little interesting for John Isner, depending on how he's feeling physically. Does he almost throw away this fourth set to try and be fresh for a fifth and final set, or does he try and fight his way back in because it's only one break? If it was two breaks, I say for sure he's throwing this set. Download the U.S. Open app to follow your favorite players. You can track the latest scores, stats, match highlights, player news, and more. Available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. USOpen.org. Oh. And all the various social media vehicles that you can follow the tennis on. 15 left. This is the kind of game Isner would want to play. Get through these games comfortably. Get a little bit of energy in reserve for the push to try and get the break back. Yeah, you could see 14, that 15. on the serve now, especially, Isner feeling a little bit of something. Not sure if it's his back 
or where the tape is, but definitely not getting nearly close to the knee bend that he was at the start of the match. Yeah, yeah moving a little bit slowly there set. as that one floated There's over the baseline. We'll see if uh, Lizer's going to hang in. He's down the break 3 2. Playing some really good tennis. Trying to play his way back into this one. The first time Mo cracked the top 100 was back in 2018. He won a couple of challenger titles in Columbus and in Tiburon. And most of his career has been spent at the challenger level. And some at the ITF. Oh, almost 300 matches sort of in those lower levels of the men's game. But certainly the kind of success that would suggest, you know, once you've had success at that level, you know, maybe you're too good for that level, that you can be a regular top 100 guy. And that's what Mo is trying to establish. He's currently 89 in the ranks, career high of 82. Yeah. Well, you see guys that are right around that 70 to 90 ranking that sometimes do go back to play challengers. Because if they're not match tough, they want to get those competitive reps and, and winning is the best recipe for confidence. So yes, even if you go back to the Challenger Tour, you win one. That just gives you that much of a confidence boost and a lot of ranking points to make you believe again. Leads four games to two fourth seconds. And he gets the game. Yeah, Mo played in Stanford, California at the Challenger there, got to the quarterfinal, so he has dipped down this year. tough when you come from the Challenger Tour to the ATP Tour. They're not used to seeing you out there on the ATP Tour, so the playbook's not really out on you. And then the more you're there, the more people start talking in the locker room, the more strategy is talked about strength and weakness of that player. So someone like Michael Moe, who has now played a lot on the ATP Tour, definitely strategy has been discussed between right. players in the locker room on how to play. And that's something you, I, I know that I did if I played someone that I didn't know that well. Talk to your friends in the locker room and say, hey, Leaf, have you played Michael Moe before? Like, what'd you think? Yeah. Then you get your friends that you think they're friends and they give you the wrong advice on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And that's where, you know, the evolution of, these, 30, of a player's game is so important. You know, you've got to add a few wrinkles to the game. The longer you're out there, the more the guys get a sort of a measure of the things you do. Just in terms of sheer numbers, you know, Michael Moe is going for his 24th ATP win today, also Grand Slam. Isner is going for 490. So you're talking about one of the established stars of the game. Up against sort of an up and down. Moe has got the break seven. advantage. Isner takes Isner care of that game to, to get a third game, but it's 4 3.
I believe you talk about those yeah. career wins from Mo and Isner, and Isner being so close to that milestone 500 wins. Talked to a couple people on the Isner team, and they said that he wanted to get to that 500 so bad. I think that's what was really keeping him wanting to play a little bit longer to hit that milestone. That is a big deal. I think of Tim Henman, who retired with 496 match oh. wins. And another one out wide. I know Goran Ivanisevic, who is in the Hall of Fame, he retired with 599. So one shy of 600. I, mean, I think 500 is a big, <laughs> bigger milestone than six, but still, when you're one away, that's... Forty fifty. Yeah, 500 is a pretty distinguished company. The last member to join that club was Gilles Simone, the Frenchman. Feliciano Lopez also got over 500. That's a good return there for Isner. You saw him on the previous one looking at his camp saying, should I slice the foreign return or should I hit over it? And that time, deciding to go and be aggressive. He's got to somehow neutralize the most serve so that he's not running off the first ball, Isner. This is where Mo can be Mo so tough to beat. To three, he defends four, beautifully, yeah. gets a lot of these balls back. It's funny though, for a guy as, as physically fit as someone like Michael Mo, you wouldn't think that he plays that kind of counter punch game. You would think he would play the power game, but today he's done a great job now of neutralizing the Isner power and making Isner play that extra ball, trying to make this physical and these long lasting points. And advantage Mo for the longer the point goes. Fifteen love. Hundred and twenty nine miles per hour. Forty nine, thirty seven aces. That was aces in your career, right, wasn't it? <laughs> that was pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> How about Raonic in Canada had 37 aces in a three-set match against Francis Tiafo. Yeah, pretty good movement there as you hustle around Game to make the forehand up. happen. Another winner Mo for Isner, another game, game full, but it's time. Michael Moe who's going to serve for the set. Yeah, both players have been starting off these big, important games with the slice out wide. Oh. 
15 yeah. low. You just get the sense that whenever Mo can get Isner on the run for more than two, three balls, that's when Isner's really struggling, especially moving out to the forehand side. He's got to push off that right leg. Thirty love. A little open on that return. Just didn't get enough solid hit in it when you're changing the line. Here's thirty love. Forty love. A love service Six game. Sexual. And we have a fifth set coming up. Michael Moe and John Isner, one set to see who advances. Boy, that was an impressive way to close out the fourth. Trying to get to the third round. Fifteen long. Yeah, he's been to the net 40 times, and that time the volley works beautifully there, inside out. Fifteen. Yeah, Mo's been so good at tracking down these balls out wide, making Isner play these long rallies. And more returns back in play. The cumulative effect of his defensive skills. That was a smart first volley there from Isner. Not trying to go to the open ball court. 15. The ball is below the net. He kept it in front of him to take away the angle from Mo. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that one. Again. <laughs> yeah, but that's good smart tennis. If you grow cross court, you're going to open yourself up to the angle. Forty, thirty. Yeah, Isner's played fun, plenty of five-set matches in his career. His record's 12 and 24. And Mo, is two and one. So experience says one thing and youth says another. And Isner Jeez. struggled with a couple of these overheads throughout this match. 
Yeah, watch the effort to get this ball underneath. Oh, good lob. He's a powerful mover in the back there. Getting his racket on a lot of shots. Yeah, you had complete opposite oh, reactions <laughs> there. After that return to serve, Isner giving a come on and Mo kind of letting out a no because he knows how big this moment is to start off this fifth and final set. He had a look at a return there. Get that in play, make it difficult for Isner. Game is that. Well, that's an important first place. step as we Four just games. hit first game, final the set. fourth hour. Hmm. Fifteen, love. Now you have to accept the challenge on your serve. And here's Mo, 30 love. Forty love. Yeah, that's a nice response. So a couple sets each and a couple of games, excuse me, a game each. This final set. Yeah, this grandstand court, there's not a bad seat in this sort of small arena, small stadium. I mean, look at this setting. It's perfect. It's Ash Stadium there in the distance. Fifteen love. Well, the emotions have to be pretty mixed for Isner. Yeah. Obviously, he's trying to focus on the match, but he knows his career is also hanging in the balance. We talked about it at the beginning. It's challenging for both players, too. Oh. Don't think Isner had that thought after the first two sets. Fifteen. Yeah, you obviously want to try and keep the emotion out of you, you know, out of that, and focus on closing and being the warrior. Is that one off the net cord?
Game is there. All right, is there. Is the lead. Two games to one. Summoning up Final some sets. energy there with some really good serving. 2 1. <laughs> 15 love. Yeah, pretty crafty little volley there. Yeah, you could see Isner kind of pulling up there as he ran wide for that forehand. Didn't want to go full out. Kind of stopped a little timidly here at the end. You could see ailing a little bit of that right calf. Fortila. Game over. Yeah, that's impressive. You feel like his serving Two is only is getting better. Set. We talk about Isner's 38 aces. Well, Mo has 17. So it's been a productive phase of play for him, too. Yeah, in his two service games, he's 100% right now. USOpen.org, your online home for point by point live scoring highlights stats and draws visit the official tournament site at usopen.org oh. oh. was waiting on that cross court slice angle try there from mo We've seen him hit a couple of those winners early on in this match and isner anticipating that one Good hands here from the big man on the half volley pickup. Not an easy shot. Mo just didn't get enough on that one. Get that past Isner. Tough from that low of an angle to really get some pace behind that. Yeah, and you can't really go up the line either. The, the net's too tall. Isner finds the winner. Dirty love. Some fine defense in that forehand corner. 30 15. Yeah, Mo using his athletic ability so well there, just making that extra ball deep in the corner. Not a lot of pace on it either, so Isner really having to generate his own power on that shot. Oh, it's 
so good. That backhand on Moe, he can really take that ball early because his backswing is so short. And he can go cross court or line with this. The ball right around shoulder height drives through that so nicely. It's almost got side spin on it the way he comes across it. One thirty two right down the tee. And and another beautiful serve. So Isner avoids a bit of trouble. And, and he's clear at 3-2. Three two. Final set. Every service game, a challenge. Let's see how Mo responds here. Fifteen love. Yeah, again, that's that flat back end from Mo that we've been talking about. Stays so low and so hard for Isner to really time that, especially when Mo gets it deep in the court like that. Just skids right off the court. Yeah, the mow backhand, it's pretty much straight back, yeah. straight through the hit. I think that's the way Jimmy Connors' mom taught the great American champion, a multiple U.S. Open champion, how to hit the backhand straight back, straight through. <laughs> well, it's pretty technically sound because in the big moments and nervous situations, not a lot can go wrong. So he's pretty confident hitting that. Game up. Nicely done. Three games all, final sets. Well, nervous moments for the teams, the parents, the fans. How are the players feeling? Fifty love. Oh. Oh. The ability to hit a flat serve with that kind of angle. That's just unreal there from Isner. No chance for Mo. Even if you guess right on that, you're not getting a racket on it. Oh. 
40 low. this game, John Isner, hoping to extend his career. He's gotten himself ahead 4-3 in the fifth. Four games to three, final set. Fifteen low. Now, Isner's best Grand Slam run came at Wimbledon back in 2018. That's the semifinal match against Kevin Anderson that we've alluded to, but also quarterfinals here in New York. Lost to Andy Murray on that occasion. Plus a couple other fourth rounds here at the U.S. Open. So he's had 32 singles wins here in New York. His best Grand Slam. Fifteen oh. all. He closed quickly after that. That's a great play there from Mo. You see Isner on the stretch here on the backhand. Hits that flat back in here, and you see him stretched with the racket face open. Only option for Isner to slice that, and Mo sneaks in there and just knocks away the volley. Really well done there. And that's where Isner is so dangerous. And that ball gets right around waist to shoulder height. He really can put some good pop on that. First little tough moment here, this final set for Mo on his serve. Forty thirty. Yeah, good serve into the body. Tying up Isner. rubbing your hands together saying what's going to happen now this is getting good Mo trying to reach the third round of the US Open Moe's never been there here at the U.S. Open in the third 15, round. Love. Started the season with a third round run in Australia. Now trying to get it done on American soil. And Isner competing in his 17th consecutive U.S. Open. 
And this will be his last. count of course no one has hit more aces than this man he's adding he's to that total. five games to four you final that's set that's a number that's not going to be surpassed any time oh. 15 love he's getting that little extra boost of adrenaline right now isner you saw him jumping up and down before he got settled to return. Crowd really getting involved here towards the end of this fifth and final set. and you practicing and you don't want to hit anymore and you're tired and you're toast and your coach makes you hit that extra couple of shots. 15, These 30. are the moments that Isner has trained his whole career and his whole life for. And he's been in this situation so many times. A little newer for Michael Moe. But when the moment gets big, that's when Isner thrives. was waiting for an out call but Mo good depth old. on that and in that forehand winner just placing that so well this yeah. one right here just enough spin yeah. to bring it down and that was a clean winner 30 all Himself a match point. 
Thank you. Ready for play. Big for a serve. Juice. Yep. Justin Gilmo stop just giving a clap saying, John, that's too good. On to the next one. Steady off the ground there. That backhand inside out. It's a potent shot. That's a great return from Isner. Juice. Don't think Mo was expecting it to come back with that much heat on it. Caught Mo on his back foot there. delivery and Isner unable to handle the return so another chance for Mo to get to five all Point saved. Five games all final sets. Yeah, new balls, you gotta go to the slice serve. Have to. Just takes off as soon as it hits court, just skids even more. See if he goes with it again, another slice. He does. 30 love. Yeah, that was a pretty heavy slice, about <laughs> 11 miles an hour faster than the wide. That was T, so a little more meat. Yes, and you got the lower part of the net there. So he can go a little bit harder. That one had some heat on it. 128. And Isner's still got some juice left. Well, we've compared him to Wilt Chamberlain. Now I guess we got to compare him to Nolan Ryan for throwing the heat, the cutter. Better game than that. Is the lead six games to five. And it's five seven. all in the fifth to deliver that beauty. All right, it's six five Isner. Boy, that's a wonderful start. Fifteen early long. on the backhand, and he was coming in behind it. Confidence and aggression. Oh boy. Uh 
up. He's okay. Yeah, that was a slip as he yeah. moved to his right. Got him pretty quickly there. Anytime the big man goes down like that, it's, he's got a long way to go. 15 to fall, so well, gladly he's, uh, he's okay there, thankfully. Good shot there from Mo. almost had that, had a good opportunity there. Yeah, just a little bit of a slip with the right foot. Lost his balance. Tell you what, Moe's been doing a great job throughout this final set. Yes, of taking care of his serve, but keeping that first serve percentage so high and dealing with the Isner pace and just maneuvering the ball and guiding it around the court, trying to keep Isner on the move, not letting him stay in one place. Oh boy, a little bit of a miss hit ball. You see the apology there from Moe, but Holds right game plan in. coming forward on that one. Yeah, and six unforced errors. So he's been really tidy in this set. He yeah. hasn't offered up too many free points, which got him into trouble in the first and second set. Yeah, that's a great number. fitting and I will say this Leaf whatever happens here I've spent time with Isner on the court in the locker room and now six games have the pleasure of calling final his matches sets. it's been an honor to tie be part break. of the John Isner career journey ladies and gentlemen final set tie breaks our first two ten points ten point breaker here to decide the fate if the Isner career will stay going or can Michael Moe? Yeah, he's trying to reach the U.S. over third round for the first time. So plenty on the line for both these guys. Moe just 25. Isner 38 years of age. And Isner drinking from the fountain of youth. Battling in the fifth here. One, Incredible zero. effort. Is the and as Richard Haig said it's a 10 point match tie break a little bit different from the 12 point which is the first to seven a little more wiggle room yeah a little bit of room to breathe but not much job with that volley. 2-0 is now. Hit that real solid. Short like that, that makes it extremely difficult. 
Well done there from Mo, well placed. First line, then cross. Two all. The great reaction volley there from Isner, but Mo on the quick pickup there, just with a little flick of the wrist, gets that ball going fast, and Isner not able to react to that one. That was a great point there from Mo. Boy, that was a tough volley. <laughs> Handled it well and finishes with the smash. Tennis, Mo defended well that forehand Four three, side. Isner. And Isner is coming forward every yeah. chance he gets. Every single opportunity. He doesn't want to get any into any baseline exchanges right now. As soon as he has an opportunity, he's been coming forward and it's worked. A credit to Mo the way he's been defending and making Isner play so many balls, most just using his athletic ability to speed. to play behind there's uh, Chris on the left Ben on the right right there that's not bad that's better remember a 10 point match tie break
how about that depth on the second yeah. serve there from Mo? Absolutely perfect. Yeah, he was definitely holding his breath for a split second. Isner connecting with the two-hander that time. Making Isner come up with the goods on that volley. Really got him stretched out. this incredible match. Isner taking the two opening sets, Mo winning the next two. Dead even. <laughs> Mo deciding to go right at Isner with that passing shot. Great first reaction there from Isner. 7-6. Isner. Sends Isner way back behind the baseline. Great drop shot. to play. Eight, seven, Mo. Thought Mo actually had plenty of time to hit over that point. He got there a lot faster than he thought.
9-7. Mo. Yeah, that's a great return from Mo to get that. Point neutralized right off the first ball. Isner had a match point earlier. Now it's Mo who has a match point. to survive this five-setter. He had a match point. He was oh so close. But instead, he is ushered into retirement in five grueling sets.